Today, we are making steak and cheese Hot Pockets. I guess they're kind of calzones also, whatever you want to call it. But I had some extra steak in the fridge and I saw this pizza dough at Whole Foods. So I figured, why not make it? I've never tried this. So this is a first attempt. So this is really as unqualified as it gets. We're going to have some onion and pepper in it. So let's start by just chopping those up into small bite-sized pieces. I like to cut the ribs out of the pepper just because they're a little tougher to chew on. Uh, these were a little too thick here, so I decided to further cut them in half just to really make sure we were getting bite-sized pieces and just kind of put them into like a nice little quarter-inch dice. That should be about all we really need. We're making basically one or two of these, uh, so you don't need a ton of food. Do the same dicing with your onion, get those bite-sized, and then we're going to chop them a little further just to make sure that they're the right size. And then we're going to add some oil into a pan. I'm going to use my skillet here just because it was out, but you could use whatever pan you want. I'm adding these in just warm because I'm not really trying to get color on them. I'm just trying to get them partially cooked so they can do the rest of the cooking in the oven and not be raw. So add them whenever. It doesn't really matter at this stage. Just mix them up, cook them down a little bit to the point where they're just starting to get tender. Salt them here. We're going to salt every step here because... This is a dish that really needs the salt to take it to the next level. So make sure you're, in your mind, almost over seasoning. But that's as far as we really want to take these. We're not going for, you know, real browned color, just soft. Put those into a bowl on the side so we could then start to work on our steak. So this is some skirt steak I had left over. I put it in the freezer just to make it a little easier to work with. Uh, but as you can see, the lines here are running from left to right on this piece of meat. So I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut it against the grain. Just so we're working with bite-sized pieces. And see that? I'm going to cut that down the line like this. So we're cutting against the grain here into nice little eighth of an inch, maybe even smaller slices. And these will just be really nice bites in your mouth. They won't be too big, and they'll also pull apart if you get a you know little half bite. So this is the perfect size for a dish like this even for making cheesesteaks also. Put those into your pan and we're gonna cook those until they're brown on all sides. You don't really see any red meat left, but you're not really looking for, you know, full color, full cooking here. They're gonna sit in the oven and get even more cooked. Also at this stage, salt and pepper your meat here as well. Very important, this meat has nothing on it. Then we're going to add our uh, onions and peppers back in just to warm them up a little bit and really make them cohesive. Get some of that meat fat also cooked onto them for a little bit of extra flavor. And then once that's done, transfer that back into your bowl. Try to get as much of the juice to stay in the pan as you can. Liquid's not your best friend in this dish. It'll just kind of bubble out of the you know, calzone pocket. That was 600 grams of dough, so I'm taking a ball, about 150 grams in size, and that's going to be the pocket we use. Try to get it rolled out nice and flat. I got it to a decent size, and it'll come back. But now let's also cut up some mozzarella. This is whole milk mozz. This is what we're going to put in. Put it in cold. You don't need to cook it at this stage. And then just mix it in throughout. Some bigger pieces are totally fine. It'll give you a little more melty yummy. Thanks to everyone who gave me that crinkle tip with parchment paper. Makes life so much easier. Get an egg on the side ready for just some egg wash. Roll this guy out a little, bitter as it, a little better. As it rested, it got a little thick around the outside, so I rolled those out more. Then here we go. Add all that filling in. Egg wash a little around the outside to help it seal. And then you're going to fold it over itself. Very easy. Try to make sure it's not too thin in any areas. I'm going to trim off some of the dough around the outside just because it was a little thick where it met the edges. And then we're just going to crimp it with a fork. The dough is still a little, you know, overly hydrated, I guess, or under. I'm not totally sure, but the, the fork had some issues. I put some Italian seasoning into the egg wash just so as I brushed it on, the seasoning w went with it. Vent it there so you can have some air come out so it won't explode help it form itself back into a little the transfer of it got an issue and then that's going to go into the oven at i started at 400 degrees and then after five minutes i raised it to 450 and that was in there for about 15 or 20 minutes 
That's how it looks. It is absolutely beautiful. The bottom, you can tell there was a little bit of a thin spot, but it didn't burst through. It was fine. Unfortunately, the part that I cut it in half didn't have any cheese in it, but the cheese, trust me, was pulley. There was a little bit that you saw there, but you could see the cheese is melted beautifully. These were delicious. I would do them exactly again. It was a great first try. I really enjoyed this dish, and it was also delicious.